You're saying to me, you're telling me Jesus Christ is not sufficient. So when he when it hit him, he switched up on me. So he said, no, 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 we're talking about the protocol. Yeah, protocol. You have to have the protocol of the spiritual. <laughs> so I said, okay, maybe that is so. Where show me <laughs> the substantive in I mean evidence in the scripture? Mm -hmm. See, now he gets offended, and automatically they go the, the offense, and now they begin to lie and say what I didn't say. So he says, no, 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 I think you're you're misinterpreting what I'm saying, Mr. Ewing. See. Everyone must be under apostolic. All kind of foolish is your <laughs> I say, okay, tell me this. If that is the case, right? Who was Moses' pastor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who was Abraham's pastor? Mm -hmm. I mean, because I, I, because based on what you're saying, this is a standard in scripture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I could call many other names, but you can't prove it. What am I saying, Mr. Cogley? What am I saying, listening audience? Audience, this is where you, the believer, have to sit back and revisit your scriptures. Yep, yep. Somebody has created a little mafia club mm -hmm. and put some heads there and telling you these hurdles you need to jump. Jesus' word is very simple. The only person between you and God the Father is me, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And anybody who is calling you their spiritual father and son and mother, it's, it's foolishness, it's utter garbage. And no human, no pastor, no bishop could tell Kevin Ewing he's my covering. I mm -hmm. reject it, I rebuke it, Anyone who tried to put themselves between Christ and the Godhead is a devil, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't like it, I don't you. Mm -hmm. But don't come to me. I tell my followers all the time, I am not. If the day you call me your spiritual father, I would not speak to you again. Mm -hmm. Because I would not pander. I would not encourage such nonsense. My job as a spiritual leader is to constantly lead you to the scriptures. And the evidence or the fruit of what I do, and you could go on social media and read it. Minister, I love the way you teach and listen, but I follow the rules you gave us. I follow what the Bible says. This is what has happened to my life. Now I'm out there winning souls. Now I've seen changes in my finances. Did Kevin do it? No. The Word of God did it. Why? Because Kevin was pointing them to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Kevin didn't wait when he scared a big chip on the shoulder. Everybody followed him now and says, now bring all your money to me. Worship me. Kiss my pinky finger. Call me your spiritual papa. Call me your spiritual da da da. What is foolishness is? <laughs> So for me, the body of Christ play a major yes. role in this idolatry yes. that has seeped yes. into the church. The pastor is just that, a pastor. pastor. The preacher, the teacher, the apostle is just that. Your role is to perfect the saints. That's it. Why are you not doing that? Why are you telling them you got to put coins in here? You got to give this seed. You got to get an envelope. I've been to the service before. The fellas say, God, on the way to the Bahamas, mm. I have a hundred envelopes. And God yes. said, write them this nice, juicy love letter and put how much money, put your best seed in there. Glory be to God. And watch God turn that yes. thing around. I hear God say, 30 days. You mean to tell me God couldn't tell you the exact? <laughs> no, he said, God, between the next, within the next 10 to 15 days, 10 to 15, what? God don't know the exact date he can do it. So all of these things challenge me. All of this challenge me. When he see he in the cloud, oh, come here, you miss, come here, come here. The Lord is showing me. They got old bear all over you. I see something planted in your yard. Two frogs jumping all over the place. God says, I'm going to kill those frogs. I'm going to murder those frogs. See, this is the garbage that people sit down and entertain. Make a demand. I want to hear. I came here to hear the gospel. I came here to change my life. I came here to hear something different than I was hearing on the streets. The reason why I'm here in this church is because I want a transformation in my heart. I don't care about your Mercedes. I don't care how God bless you. I will see it happen for me. What were the scriptures that you followed? What prayers did you do? What fasting? What Christian discipline did you do to bring about the manifestation in your life? And don't bring no seed garbage around me because I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Until you get tired mm -hmm. and had enough, you love what's happening to you. But that's what a lot of... Some people like that. Yeah. They don't mind that they because... Like that. To them, that's that's church. Mm -hmm. So there would always be people who would, would be willing to accept. It. That's what right. they want. Right. There are very few people who say, "I want more than this." Wow. Exactly. You ought to be willing to say, "I want more than this." Exactly. You know, but that's why people are going to sit there and listen to it because it's easy. It's no work for them. They say, "This is what I want." So, and if you if you if if you are there because you want just blessed financially then that's why you're going to stay that's why you're going to listen to it and that's why you're going to keep giving because you're hoping your number falls see the sad and the tragedy about that uh, mr copley is the fact that the more we push the seed so in voodoo in my opinion is you're pulling away 
the thing that people ought to be putting their trust in, which is the Word of God. When I teach my people, I am constantly quoting scripture. You watch me, so you know scripture after scripture. Them point, I mean, reiterating this scripture here, you need to stand on. Many of you know I'm doing my fast now, my 40 day fast. I'm at the stage, my 20. No food at all, just liquids. Christian discipline. How many Christians are doing stuff like this to achieve more in their Christian walk, to get a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ? No, they're too busy waiting for the pastor to say, we need to go on a fast. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a Daniel fast. You know, you eat some steak and cheese, doodle, and two hours after you don't do it, and, and God is going to turn that thing around for you. How much longer are you going to watch your children walk in generational curses? How much longer are you going to watch your, your husband who is an alcoholic and you're watching your children become alcoholic? You're watching the grandchildren become... How much longer are you going to watch your children have children on the wedlock like you did and your grandparents? How much longer are you going to sit in that place not hearing the word of God but people coming and giving testimonies? One thing, Pastor, when I sowed that seed of $50, Golary beater Jesus... <laughs> God turned that thing around for me like I... What did he turn around for you? <laughs> the car couldn't start. Yeah. My son said, Mommy, push the gas. Oh, Lord. And when I put that second hit of, Oh, Lord, I think turn right over Jesus. Lord, God is good. Pastor, take it out of $15,000. That is ignorance. That is stupidity at its peak. It is not of God. It is a doctrine of devil. I'm hearing every thing. And that's why I'm upset. People are like zombies in these places. Yeah. Like zombies just to get back to the club, just to get back to the clicks. When are we going to go back to finally be truly trained? And then it's time to depart to go preach the word of God. No, everybody want to be a pastor, doctor, reverend, um, high priest, all this other stuff with absolutely no fruit to them. And that is a travesty in my opinion. And that's why Jesus was so frustrated with the Sadducees and Pharisees. Right. Because he saw what they were doing, burdens on people that can't even carry right. it. Right. But you were asking them to carry it. Right. He was very frustrated with religious leaders. Right. Because he saw what it was doing. So imagine they were doing that from back then. Right. right. <laughs> and they're still doing it today. Mm -hmm. Television and social media just making it even more evident. I remember when I used to be on the Cindy Russell show, there was a lady that gave me a call. She said, Listen, I'm really I love your teachings on spiritual warfare, very detail detailed and so on. She said, her and a group are planning to do a prayer walk about in the International Bazaar because they feel that a lot of demonic forces based on the things that happened. She was on the right path and everything. I said, man, I would love that. I said, she, she wanted me to be a part of it. I said, yeah. And I said, under this condition, though, I said, now the people that are going to be doing this with you, what, what, what are their knowledge on these things? Because I'm clearly you're aware of it. The Tory gate, the Buddhist, mm -hmm. all of these things coming from religious cultures that literally violate what we Christians believe. So I said, have you trained them or give them some kind of insight? Because if we're going to come up against such idols, just sit back. Mm. Right. Some people could develop sickness from this and heartaches and accidents, all kind of stuff. So she said, and I don't want to lie on her, but in so much words, she didn't see the need for that. Mm. So I said, I don't see me being a part of something that if the people don't know, th this isn't a case where you just go, oh, I put it down in the name of right, Jesus, and I right. pull it down, all strongholds, strongholds. And what are you doing to pull it down? Have these people fasted before? <laughs> Have the Bible says that this kind will only come through prayer and fasting. Right. What has been there? I need to know the crew that I'm leading because I was supposed to be the leader of one particular group and so on. So I think she got offended with me and I didn't care because I'm, I'm not going to play church. Right. I'm not going to say because you say let's go to the park, let's go to the bazaar, go pray. I must just run because I'm a Christian. No. Spiritual warfare is no different from real life war. You have to have a strategy. You right. need to know what your opponents are dealing with. You need to know what are their weaponry, their artillery, where they store this. You know none of that. All you say is we are Christians and we get out there to fight the devil. Which devil are you going to fight? <laughs> so I told her, I said, Mom, listen, with all due respect, I can't be a part of this. Mm -hmm. Now, you could get somebody else, but I ain't going to do it. And I, I, I didn't do it because I wasn't going to be a part of it because I know the premises on which you was the regular pump and pageantry. The
Christians are spiritually lazy. Mm. They just want somebody to feed them. They don't want to do it themselves. But you want to become a disciple. That's the bottom of the sign. Mm -hmm. I, I would even add to that, that I think most believers are damaged in the sense that they've been a, a distorted, erroneous, uh, uh, so-called covering for so long, that even when they make up their mind to leave in some cases, they are not just leaving the building, but they're leaving with some tenets and beliefs in them that it's hard to really decipher what is the true word of God right. for them. Mm -hmm. for, for example, uh, many people, again, coming back to discovering nonsense, when I sit down and explain to them, listen, the only person you obligate, no, no, you are obligated to no preacher and no preacher of authority over you according to the scriptures. The preacher, according to the book of Hebrews, says, the Bible says that the preachers are responsible for our souls, for they watch over our souls. Mm -hmm. Now, many of them took that to mean right. that you, 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 you have to submit. So not to submit because we ought to submit to those who are preaching the gospel. It means that we lord over you, right. and you shouldn't do nothing in your life unless you consult us. So if you're going to go pee, check your kidney, mm -hmm. whatever, you must tell us what you can do. But that is not what that scripture is saying. What it is saying is that we, as the believe, the preachers of Jesus Christ. We are responsible for who we teach to ensure the word of God is being directed to them. So when people listen to me, I am following that. I am responsible for your soul, which is your mind. Your soul. So if you go and do that, that ain't on me. I did my part by showing by, by my responsibility of giving you the scriptures. Our society has made the preachers like he, he could do no wrong and whatever he say you must just bow like a fool and just do it under the work here that don't work see what you're doing now is you're violating my freedom in Christ Jesus and too many people again they become these puppets to these people and they just leave the responsibility of studying the scriptures to him mm -hmm. and whatever he says whether it's right or wrong mm -hmm. don't touch God's anointed mm -hmm. I had a friend of mine, I don't know what has become of him, but he was had this doctrine that it is okay for men to have multiple wives. He is a pastor. He is a baby. Mm -hmm. So I said, how you, how, you, how you got there? So he went and gave me all the stuff with Solomon and, yeah. and so on. So I said, well, where you can pull that off? Because first of all, I mean, the Bahamas law in and of itself, yeah. right. forget the Bible right now, the Bahamas law. And he is adamant about that. He also believes that his wife must submit to him in the sense that she have no will of her own. Whatever he says mm -hmm. is how it goes. Mm -hmm. So when I sat down and listened to this guy, because I was really trying to Google uh, Fox Hill uh, Asylum, <laughs> how quick I get a bag of rice off this guy, because I'm thinking of myself, where, where did he get this from? And... We're going to reserve this giving away to locally right here in Freeport. And the reason for that is because trying to get these things mailed to you and so on, you know, such a hassle. So for right now, those locally, if you call in uh, right now, you could get a free copy of this book. All right. So did you let me just have that number up. No, we can use that. that, that uh, yeah, book. Yeah. Five, four, three, eight, seven, five, nine, five. To get an autograph copy of Mr. Andrew's book, Noise. Okay, so we got a caller right now. Let me see if I can. Get this. <laughs> okay. Okay, now you got to teach me how to use this horn. How do we turn this on? Yeah. Maybe it's probably called back. And I, once it's coming, I want you to put it on speaker for me. You will be writing down the names. Um, and I want to give a shout out to my awesome. Uh, Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, hi. Who, who am I speaking with? My name is Sherry. Sherry. Sherry, what's your last name? Sherry Amelie. Sherry Amelie. Amelie. Okay, Sherry Amelie. And I guess you're calling for your book, right? <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, so Deidre's going to write down that name right now. That's Sherry Amelie. Mm -hmm. And Sherry, you're going to get a signed copy of Noise by Mr. Andrew K. Copley. Do you live here in Freeport? Yes, I do. Okay, beautiful. So you can come here uh, shortly after, let's say about 2.10. Oh, she spelled her last name. 
210. You can come and pick up your coffee. How do you spell your last name? A-R-M-A-L-Y. That's A-R-M-A-L-Y. Okay. Okay, beautiful. So Sherry will be the first uh, owner Hera. of the book. Facebook and Hero? No. The oh. yeah. So again, you can step, you can come down like about shortly after two and you can come and collect a copy, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. All right. Okay, you so know, I was I was I was surprised when they turned on the television the other day and those guys still were doing that with the seed thing. Oh yeah, I was yeah. like they still doing this. Yeah, I mean it's it's been a while, but I believe that people are still doing that. All right. Hello. Slide it. Speak up. Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Who am I speaking with? Shante Parker. Shante Parker. C H A N T E. Yes. Okay, so did you can write C H A N T E. Right. Shante Parker. Okay, Shante Parker is our second caller. So she just got the second book. Thank you very much for calling, Miss Parker. Uh, you can come down shortly after two. We're going to be ending this. And we need you to come quickly before we leave, okay? Okay, I'm going to send the location, please. Oh. Dove location. Yeah, you go got a Google. Uh, the uh, give Dove. them the 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 Bahamian way. Yeah. Pass. <laughs> okay, where uh <laughs> the Soyuz food store is? Yeah. If you're going east, that's east or that's that's not sorry, south towards Soyuz. Like if you're coming down from Dolly Madison, you come all the way down to the end, past Sawyer, past the paint place, go across the street, <laughs> and the building on the uh, right hand side is Dove. You're gonna see the big sign once you pull in the yard. It's a it's a gated thing. You just come through the gate and just ride around. You'll see okay. the beat of Dove sign, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys. I think we got someone else here calling in again. So did you say slide this cross? Slide and it press up. Speaker. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Who am I? Johnica Christie. Yes. Beautiful. And I guess you're calling for your copy, right? Yes, sir. Beautiful. So did you could just write down Johnica Christie? Well, Johnica Christie, you're the third caller, and you're gonna have your personal autograph copy of Noise. You can come down at the uh, Dove uh, radio station shortly after 2 to collect your copy. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, all right. Okay, these calls are coming in quick. Okay, so did you say pull that cross and press speak up? <laughs> hello? Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm blessed, thank you. Who am I speaking with? Marilyn. Marilyn, what's the last name? Bridgewater. Marilyn Bridgewater. Okay, Marilyn, you are the owner of one of these awesome books by Mr. Andrew K. Coakley. And you can come by shortly after 2 o'clock to pick up your copy. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So you got that one, right? Ms. Yes, Bridgewater. Yep. Okay, beautiful. And we're ready. That's four now. That's four? Okay. Mm -hmm. Just trying to do this quickly so we can quickly go back. Hello? Do you have a book? I'm cool, please. Um, cool. Hi. I'm pretty good. Who am I speaking with? I'm cool. Oh, Ann Cooper. Okay, you can write that down, did you, Ann Cooper? Well, Miss Cooper, you are the owner of one of these books by, not one of these books, but Noise by Andrew K. Coakley. And you can come by shortly after two to pick up your copy, okay? Thank you very much. Beautiful. You. Thank you. I'm counting nine. Do you have one? Do you have one of the books? Yeah, 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 one of them over here. Right now. Right okay. Now. He signed it? No, I didn't sign that one. Yeah. Hello? Hey. Hello, who am I speaking with? Claire Feaster. Claire Feaster? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you can write that down, Gigi. Well, Miss Feaster, you yeah. are the proud owner of one of these awesome books by Mr. Coakley, and you can come down at Dove shortly after two to pick up your copy. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay. I'm excited. All right. <laughs> Boy. Okay, here we go. Okay. So how, how much more we have now? So we make sure. This is... You should have a six. Six. I think I counted six. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, you have six left. Yes. Okay, beautiful. Okay, we got someone that's coming in here again. So you didn't bring anybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> beautiful. This voice sound like Miss Donna. My God, I I feel the prophetic vein right now. I see. <laughs> So put down Donna Coakley. Donna Coakley. Gee, Donna's we, blessed. You, let me tell you something. You are so annoyed right now. We're going to bring your coffee personally <laughs> to you. How about that? You, you take that. <laughs> so we'll, we'll reserve your coffee and drink off to you, okay? Okay. Okay. They sent see, a call see. the number off again. A lot of people are telling me they need to hear the number again. Okay. So you have it right there. Yeah. Okay. So the there. number is 438-7595. Four three eight seven five nine five. Okay, so I got another call coming in here. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Hi. I know pretty good. And who am I speaking to? Estime Musgrove. Estime Musgrove? No, uh, Ethel May. Oh, Ethel Ethel May yeah. Musgrove. You can write it down, Ethel May. Okay, Miss Musgrove, we have a copper reserve here just for you. So you can come down to Dove shortly after two to pick up your free autograph copy. Thank you. Okay, God bless you. Eight, we're gonna get two more. <laughs> so how much more we have? Two, two and we had um, two persons who couldn't reach the phone. Okay, so, me, so will we use them? Those two, because one is Miss Turnquest, uh -huh. and the other one was Miss Gia Walker. And that'll be it? And that'll be it. Okay, well then let's go there, because we gave all the calls to the phone, so those yes. two on WhatsApp, we'll have to go with that. So that'll be it, right? Yes. Okay, so folks, uh, no reason to call anymore. But where can they get the books locally, let them say, for those? Okay, well, you can oh, go Bethel's ahead. Bethel's Bookstore locally. In Nassau, it's at Lowe's Bookstore. Okay. Yeah, in Freeport, it's Bethel's Bookstore. Okay, beautiful. So those books, folks, as soon as you see that clock strike two o'clock, please, you should be outside because we don't plan to be here for long. We want you to come and collect your books. And we have the names written. Call them. I'm going to call the names again so they'll know. Okay, so what we're going to do, DJ is going to call off the names who should be coming down here for their books. And please don't try and pull a fast one because I'm going to ask for your property paper, your mommy boy <laughs> certificate. I need an affidavit and all that from you, okay? So make sure you got to make statement. Yeah. Right, that's my, my <laughs> statement, right. Plus okay. your uh, uh, debit card. But go ahead, DJ. Okay, that's Shante Parker or Shante Parker, mm -hmm. Sherry Almany. I have that right? No, uh... Armley. Armley. Okay. Armley, yeah. John, what was the J? Christy. I have Christy. Mm -hmm. Johnique Christy. Yeah. Okay. Then there was Marilyn Bridgewater, Anne Cooper, yeah. Claire Feaster, Donna Coakley, E. Musgrove. I don't have the first. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Turnquest and Gia Walker. Okay, beautiful. You ten lovely people will receive Mr. Coakley's book. Well, if they want to, they can call me and... Um, to get copies of the book. Okay. So what number would that be? 533-5078. Okay. So that's 533-5078. If you'd like to purchase a book from Mr. Coakley, he would make sure that you get one to purchase. We already given away the 10 <laughs> right, free, so right. make sure when you call it's to pur purchase. 533-5078. That's to reach Mr. Coakley. Okay, so while we're on that note, and uh, we got a little time here, first of all, Mr. Google, I want to thank you for accepting our invitation. And I also want to extend another invitation for you to come on the show again. And because I like talking to you and I like your ideas, I, I, I like how your thoughts flow. So, yes, we can speak more about the book when you come, but I even want us to get in some more deeper things and from your perspective. Mm -hmm. So, before you, you know, get big and out there and get all these invitations, you know, I just you want to squeeze get it. No more. Yeah, right, right. I try to squeeze <laughs> that, you know, when I call on you again, I just want to make sure. I mean, of course, if you're free, if you would be more than happy to come on the show again, I would love to oh, have sure. you. I know Mr. Coakley's book is there already, all right? I'm going to continue to promote his book because I think it's a powerful read. I want to encourage everyone on there, especially our local audience, our Bahamians. This is a book that you really need to challenge, to challenge where you are as a Christian right now. What, what, what are you gaining? What profit are you? What the, Jesus said, not us, you will know them by their fruit. Yes. Fruit. You, you have literally held up the banner that you were in church for at least 6.7 million years, right? What have you produced? What fruit? What?
can I look at your children and say, boy, mommy really taught us the Bible, all of us are saved, blah, blah, blah. What fruit are you producing other than following the routine of going to church every Sunday, every Bible study? What changes are taking place in your life? What changes are taking the, the lives of your children? So these are the things that the book will really, really begin to expand your understanding in. So Mr. Cookley, are there any final words that you would want to share before we close up? Well, I'd, again, Minister Gavin, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, I just want to encourage people to get more into the scriptures. Um, I also want to encourage believers to learn to spend time with the Holy Spirit. One of the things that helped to change my life was practicing the presence of the Holy Spirit. When I say that, I mean pretend as if the Spirit was there in person. Right. right. And if, if there are certain things you wouldn't do if he was actually there, then practicing the Holy Spirit means you you know he's there, so you're not going to do it, right. or you're not going to say it. And as I always say, Christianity is a personal thing. So if I was to stop by your house and and I come in and I press the the button on your remote control that says last, what would come up? Right. Or if I turn on your stereo, what would come right, up? Right, right, right. You might have changed it because you see me right, coming. Right, 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 right. But uh, what would come up? But <laughs> it's real. not just trying to um, show good. Me or somebody else is is actually just knowing that um, the spirit is there with you. Right. So as long as you practice the presence of the Holy Spirit, it, it, I, it's changed my life. Right. Because I remember, even though I was a Christian, I when I went to the movies, there were there might have been curses in the movie. It didn't bother me. I'm right. like, I want to watch the movie. Right. But once I began to practice the presence of the Holy Spirit. I remember the first time it happened, I went into the movie, got my hot dog, popcorn, chocolate-covered almonds, and mm -hmm. Coke soda, and I was ready to go. Right, right. And then the movie started, and then when I heard the the profanity started, there was, I began to be uneasy. Right. You know, I was like, oh, whoa. It never bothered me before. <laughs> right, right. So after that, it was difficult for me to just sit and watch a movie with so much profanity because I've learned that the Holy Spirit is here with me. Time. Right. Well, so Ms. Ewing, any closing remarks with you? Yeah, I just want to share with Mr. Coakley that I was very intrigued um, of your descriptive way of describing natural noise that we hear every day mm -hmm. from the noise of the spiritual world. And I think when persons open your book and read that, just that opening statement that you have from page one, it makes you more intrigued to just keep going and keep going and keep going because I looked at all of your adjectives and the way you describe things and I say wow that's really really true I mm. mean you hit it when they say hit the nail on the head mm -hmm. you most certainly did and with the spiritual world it's a bit different now because for persons who don't who's not aware much of the spiritual world mm -hmm. what you describe of the natural world clearly gives them some idea of the spiritual world once they go into the yeah. spiritual world okay this is not of natural because natural is a natural is b mm -hmm. natural is c mm -hmm. so to me for that that was key to your book because mm -hmm. introducing that allows them now as they go deeper into the book for those who do not understand the spiritual yeah. world but well, let me go back and see what all this natural world is mm -hmm. so i could get a better understanding right. of the spiritual right. world though so for me that really for me who know but the spiritual world i still found that very intriguing mm -hmm. so this really is an excellent book people go out there and get it but before i go honey i have two birthday shadows that i okay. must do it's samantha ramming miss diva five <laughs> she works with me at freeport primary school you go girl i will not say your age she's a plus to her age but she don't want to say her right age so go birthday girl with the plus and latoya jones our receptionist Samantha birthday is today, but Latoya birthday is tomorrow. Phenomenal young lady. Y'all enjoy all days from the beautiful. Spiritual Insight Show. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So uh, we were temporarily cut out on Facebook, but somebody popped back up. Some kind of internet. Yeah, someone texted me said he wasn't getting any sound. Yeah, so, right. I so, see that too. So, anyway, nevertheless, uh, we want to thank God once again for Mr. Coakley, his presence here, and the information that he would have brought here. I wish we had more time so we can go even more depth into it. But I want to give another uh, uh, Amazon for those of you internationally. 
you need to get a copy of this book, please go to Amazon.com. You can type in noise or you can type in Mr. Andrew K. Coakley's name and we'll pull up uh, the information there. Please order a copy. You will not regret it. You guys know how I go. I do not bring anybody on my show or even promote anything unless I would have researched it myself. And then it must appeal to the things that I speak here. Uh, Mr. Coakley has exceeded those expectations, I must say that. So it was a pleasure bringing him here to speak from his heart as it relates to his book, so on and so forth. I want to thank everybody out there that supports the uh, Spiritual Insights show. Many people see me throughout the week, tells me all the time that the show is an inspiration to them, as well as those who want to put me in the headlock and really pile drive me a couple of times, but that's quite fine. I understand that, you know, everything can be peaches and cream. But what I want to leave you with here is simply this put your trust in god put your trust in the word of god yes love your teacher kevin yes love your apostle less less love your preacher but we are not god and we ought not to be treated as god we should be treated just the same way you treated your primary high school college teacher they are there to share the knowledge with you to make you a better person you should be taking that knowledge thinking how you're going to make life better for others as well as yourself God did not call you to a church to idolize someone. God did not call you to it as a social meeting. You were to come there for a short period of time to learn and now to move on in life to begin to bring disciples back to the kingdom of God. If you see church as anything other than that, then I think you want to reevaluate your version of how you look at church. Okay, with that said, I want to thank everyone once again. God bless you. You can be here with me next week. God spares life as we get deep 